Did you ever look back at something you've done and wondered, how could I have been that dumb or worse, that naive? Well, sadly, I have. And in my cases, I actually did this stuff on job interviews. I'll share with you the stories along with the lessons learned, so hopefully you won't make the same mistakes. At least one of them cost me dearly, literally. I ended up with about a 20% lower salary than I could have gotten. And that really pains me. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. Mistake number one, not recognizing the third person in the interview. Here's what happened. I went on an interview just like any other interview and I went into the room and you know I started having a dialogue with the woman who was going to be my boss and she explained the job and as she explained the job I thought to myself mm -mm, um, th this is not for me I'm, I'm not I'm not interested there's no way even if they offered it to me that I would accept the job basically I thought it was boring the way she explained it so about halfway through she said uh, do you have any questions before I continue with the second part of explaining what the second part of the job would be and I said no I said I don't have any questions I said but you know what this job isn't for me and I don't want to waste any more of your time so I think I should leave now and she agreed I should leave and off off I went off, off I went now this is what I was thinking I was thinking I wouldn't waste any more of the time on the interview I'd get a sandwich for myself before returning to the office and I figured that the since I wouldn't be taking the job I had saved everybody a bunch of time and that the woman who was interviewing me would appreciate the fact that I wasn't wasting her time. That is not what happened. The woman who was interviewing me was outraged. She was very proud of her job, the job that she had, and most people would be or are when you're interviewing. And the fact that I didn't want the job or that, you know, I thought the job was beneath me um, infuriated her. And she shared her fury with the recruiter. The, re the recruiter called me up and basically said to me, what were you thinking? Now, my, my only excuse for this is I was very young and I didn't know better. But what I did not l realize or did, what I wasn't fully cognizant of and the lesson learned, if you would, is that when Whenever you go on an interview, there is a third person in the room, the recruiter. This is the person who got the opportunity for me, and this is the person whose livelihood depended on not only me landing that job, but um, on me taking it. And she was interested in getting additional referrals from the company that, that, that I was interviewing with. And I'm sure the company thought, if this is the kind of candidate they send over, then you know we'll, we'll look someplace else. So lesson learned, I should have just said sat there. I should have been polite. I should have listened. I didn't have to be outstanding. And then I could have gone back, told the recruiter, no, I'm not, I'm not interested. And then if they wanted to interview me again, she could have said something polite. Oh, like the candidate has taken another job. So when you're, you, you're in an interview, remember, it's not just you you're representing, but you're representing the recruiter as well. Okay. Mistake number two, not preparing for the unexpected. This is what happened to me and it was again kind of at the beginning of my career and the important takeaway here is there were no cell phones so i had an interview and i'd left myself plenty of time in fact i'd left myself so much time i was going to take the train into the city and then instead of taking the subway up to where the interview was i was going to walk i was going to take a long leisurely walk i figured this way i would be relaxed because this was um, a job i was really interested in so i got on the train the door was on the train shut we went three minutes and the train came to a stop there was a train in front of us that had broken down and we had to wait for them to remove that train before we we could go forward and we sat there for over an hour now remember no cell phones at this point so when I got into Manhattan uh, to you know t go up for the interview not only did I not have time for my leisurely walk I didn't even have time to take the subway I had to uh, get in a cab which which was fine now normally when you in that situation I would have called from this a pay phone in, in Penn Station saying that I was late but I had no telephone numbers with me now today you'd have a cell phone you could have called uh, from your your cell phone even if you hadn't brought the phone number hopefully you would have uh, been able to find it but not preparing for the unexpected so when I got there um, the interview that had been planned I was going to spend a certain amount of time with the guy in HR and then he was going to take me up to the to talk with the uh, person who would be my boss which is so when I got there I was so late 
he was furious with me. The HR person didn't have time to interview me, and so I, I went right to the person who was going to be my boss. Now, my thinking, clearly, it never occurred to me until they announced on the train that it was delayed, that it might be late, that it might be that much late, and that I might have to contact someone. So expect the unexpected. Lessons learned, you can probably uh, figure this out. While this is much less likely to happen today, there are other things that can happen. So you want to make sure you always have contact numbers that are easily accessible. You don't want to have to try and start making four phone calls to get somebody to look in your email etc. So the unexpected always has a way of showing up. Um, you probably have noted. All these stories happened to me earlier in my career. Um, thankfully, I got a little better at interviewing uh, with age and especially given mistake number three, and that is revealing too much. And this is what happened to me in that particular situation. I had a number in my head of a salary that I wanted. Um, and to me, like if I ever made that much money, um, I, I thought I'd, you know, I would hit the jackpot. And um, of course, now I laugh at that amount. I'm not even going to tell you because you'd laugh at it also. So I went on the interview and of course, the HR person, like any good HR person, asked me what my salary requirements were. And so I told her, okay, now um, they interviewed me and the next day they called me up and they offered me exactly what I had asked for. Thankfully, they didn't offer me a little less because I probably would have taken it. But uh, my thinking at that point was, limited. Um, it never occurred to me that they might actually be willing to pay more than I was lo looking for or that they might have tried to talk me down, which thankfully they didn't. Um, so lessons learned. There are much better ways to answer this question than blurting out the number, even if you know what it is. In fact, I believe that this issue is so important that we did a short video on the right way to answer this question, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.